Our next example, 2,735 divided by 63. It shows up in the box method like this. The divisor is outside of the box. The dividend is inside of the box. One of the first things we're going to have to worry about is where do we start on this problem? And you can tell by covering up all of the numbers except the first and decide whether 2 is larger than the d divisor. 27. 273. Finally, we have a number that's larger. So the 3, I'm just going to darken the 3 or put a little line under it. So I remember that the, the, when I choose an, an answer, a quotient, partial quotient, it's going to go above the darkened number or the slightly underlined num number. Now the 63, for the purposes of, of uh, easily estimating, I'm going to round this to the nearest tens, which would give me 60. So I'm thinking 60 when I'm choosing my answers, but I'm using 63 when I actually do the calculations. So we'll say again, how many times now does 6 go into 2? It does not. 27? Does 6 go into 27? Yes, we could do 4 times with that. But I'm going to put the 4 over the number that I've darkened here. And because there's an extra number here at the end, I'm going to use a placeholder. What I'm really saying is 63 divides into 2,735 40 times. But I never would have been able to think of that off the top of my head. Now we're going to do the, the uh, multiplication back. Anything times 0 is 0. So we're done with this one. Now 4 times 3, I'm doing 4 times the 1's column, is 12. I'm carrying 1. <clears throat> 4 times 6 is 24, and 1 more is 25. Now the subtraction takes place. And I have a remainder that now goes to an, the next box, which I will draw now. 215 <coughs> goes up. And uh, the process is started over again. I'm looking for where I'm going to start, where I'm going to put my first answer. So 63 divides into 2, too small. 21, too small. I have to use the complete number. So I'm going to darken the 5 just to remind myself. Because this is where my thinking switches over to 60. But to actually think of 60 divides into 215, that gets hard again. So I'm only going to take the 6. 6 goes into 2. No. 6 goes into 21. Um, three times. Because 3 times 6 is 18. That's pretty close. But the 3 is going to go above the 5. Because I darkened it. It's, it reminds me of that's where I'm going to put my answer. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 6 is 18. Subtract. Uh, there's some regrouping that I have to do here. That's 15 take away 9 is 6. And we're going to regroup again. 10 take away 8 is 2. 63 is larger than, which tells me that that is my remainder. These are partial quotients, so these need to be added together with the remainder of 26. If I was to come outside the box on this, it would be 63. We start over again. I would need to have several boxes here. I'll make that one a little bit bigger. And each of the numerals has a special box of its own. This is a variation. Again, I'm going to estimate this as 60. And now I'm going to start my work. We'll, we'll 
63 or even 60 go into 2? No, that is the 2 goes up. 27 is still too small. This goes up. At 200, let me get this set better, 273 is where we were at right here. See the 273 is right here? It took a, a few tries to get to it, but that's where we're, we're logically going. Then we're going to think 6 goes into 2, 27, yep, 4 times. 4 times 3 is, is 12, carry 1. 4 times 6, 24, 25. That's the same 252 we got here. So our subtraction, 21 goes to the last box, and that's where we are here. When we um, went 6 goes into 2, no, 21, 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 6 is 18. Do you see how the numbers are the same? And our subtraction gives us 26. In this case, we don't have to uh, add any of the partial products. This tells us it's 43, the same 43 we got here. So this is equal to 43, remainder 26, because that was too small to do any more division.